Hello everyone and welcome to managerial accounting. In this video we're going to start talking about chapter 18 which is about activity-based costing or ABC. But before we get into ABC or activity-based costing we're going to get some idea about product costing allocation methods. So there are three different methods which include the activity-based costing. So we'll start first with the first two methods and then we'll talk about ABC which is one of the most commonly used uh, costing methods in, in, in the industry. So first let's understand what do we mean by product costing allocation methods. There's something that we have to understand which is the product costing. So determining the cost of a product is the term or it's termed product costing. So product cost consists of three things, direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. So I hope you remember that. We talked about direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. The direct material and direct labor are direct costs that can be traced to the product. But on the other hand, factory overhead includes indirect costs that must be allocated to the product. So we cannot really trace it directly to the product. The most common methods of allocating factory overheads using predetermined factory overhead rates are the, are the following. The first one that we'll talk about shortly is the single plant-wide factory overhead rate method. This method is very easy, simple, and it doesn't cost a lot. That's one of the good things about it. Then we have multiple production department factory overhead rate method. And this includes more than one rate. And then we have the activity-based costing or the ABC costing, which, are, which is the one we're going to spend more time on. So if you look at this exhibit, you can see the allocation of factory overhead cost using the three different methods. We have this single plant-wide rate method, the multiple production department rate method, and the ABC method. So whatever the method is, we still have the direct material, direct labor, and the factory overhead. So the, the method we're using, it's only going to impact the factory overhead calculation. Other than that, they're all the same thing. Of course, the factory overhead is not going to be the same value. It might be the same value for the entire factory, but for each product, it's going to be different. So let's try a knowledge check and uh, try to answer this question. Which of the following are considered product cost? Is it direct material, direct labor, and supervisor salaries? No, we didn't talk about that. Direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and executive salaries? Again, no. Direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead? Sounds reasonable. But let's read the last one. Direct material, administrative overhead, and indirect labor? So the right answer is C. It's direct material, direct labor, and the factory overhead. So product cost consists of, consists of direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. Any cost that occurs outside the manufacturing process is a period cost. So the product cost is direct material, direct labor, and the factory overhead. So let's start with the first method, which is the single, single plant-wide factory overhead rate method. So under this method, factory overhead costs are located to products using only one rate, and that's what makes it simple, very easy. The budgeted allocation base is a measure of operating activity in the factory. So how are we going to measure this or on what basis are we going to have this kind of uh, rate? The common allocation basis includes either direct labor hours, it could be direct labor dollars, or it could be machine hours. It could be different things. But uh, I think in, in our examples that we're going to see for the single plant-wide factory overhead rate method is going to be the direct labor hours. The primary advantage of using the single plant-wide factory overhead rate method is that it's simple and inexpensive to use. Why it's not expensive? Why it's, in, it's considered to be inexpensive? Because it's not time consuming. And you know, remember, the, the accountant's time is what makes it expensive. So in this case, it's very simple, straightforward, and because of that, we consider it to be inexpensive. On the other side, the single plant-wide rate assumes that the factory overhead costs are consumed in the same way by all products which is not always the case for most factories. And that's why some, some factories and some businesses, they don't like to use this kind of um, plant-wide factory rate. 
So let's see this example. We have Rose Company manufactures snowmobiles and riding mowers in a single factory. So they have two products. They have snowmobiles and they have the riding mowers. The total budget, budgeted factory overhead cost for the year is about 1.6 million. Again, that's budgeted. It's not the actual number. That's the budget. And we also have a budgeted direct labor hour. It's about 20,000 hours. So the total budgeted direct labor hours would be computed as well. We have snowmobiles and we have riding mowers. The plant production for the year is about 1,000 units for each. The direct labor hours per unit, which is our base here that we're going to be using, is about 10 hours per snowmobile. And the same thing for every riding mower. We, we need 10 direct labor hours. So that means that our budgeted direct labor hour for the snowmobiles is about 10,000 hours and for the riding uh, mowers it's about 10,000 hours. So the total here is 20,000 hours which is how we got this budgeted direct labor hours. That's how this was calculated. So under the single plant wide factor overhead rate method, the 1.6 million budgeted factor overhead is applied to all products by using one rate. Remember we have two products. We're going to simply calculate one rate and apply it to the two products. So how the rate is going to be computed? It's going to be the total budgeted factory overhead, which is our 1.6 million, divided by the total budgeted plant-wide plant allocation base, which is the 20,000 hours that we just calculated. So Rose allocates factory overhead using budgeted direct labor hours as the plant-wide allocation base. Therefore, Rose single plant-wide factory overhead rate is $80. How did we get that? Again, the 1.6 million or 1,600,000 divided by 20,000 direct labor hours, and that would be $80 per direct labor hour. Again, just to refresh your memory, how did we get these numbers? They were given to us here. The 1.6 million, that was the budgeted factory overhead cost for the year, and the 20,000 hours were the budgeted direct labor hours. And the 20,000 hours were calculated in this table below. So this is how we got this rate and it's going to be a standard rate or a single rate that we're going to be using for each product. Remember we have two products in, in this uh, company. So the plant factor overhead 1.6 million. We're going to have $80 per direct labor hour. So each product uses 10 direct labor hours. So we take the 10 multiplied by 80. So the, the budgeted overhead is going to be 800 per, per unit of snowmobiles and the mowers. Same value. Because it happened to be 10 direct labor hours for each product. Let's test our knowledge again. Which of these is the primary advantage of using a single plant-wide factory overhead rate? Is it it's the most accurate method? Mm, I'm not quite sure of that. It is simple and expensive to use? I think I've read that before. Is it the only method accepted by GAP or generally accepted accounting principles? No, there are more than one method that is accepted by GAP. Is it the most common method to use? Again, that's not true. So the right answer is B. So the primary advantage of using the single plant-wide overhead rate method is that it's simple and inexpensive to use. The other methods are more expensive, but relatively more accurate. And we have to keep that in mind. So now let's see a different method, or the second method. A little bit more complex, but it's not too complex. A little bit more complex, but I think it might give us better calculations. The second method is called the Multiple Production Department Factor Overhead Rate Method. This method uses different rates for each production department to allocate factor overhead cost to products. So here we have to think about departments because each department we are going to have different allocation for the factory overhead. So assume that Ruiz uses the following two production departments in the manufacture of snowmobiles and riding mowers. They have a fabrication department and they have assembly department. So the fabrication department out of the 1.6 million, which is our budget for the overhead cost, we have 1 million allocated to the fabrication department and 600,000 allocated to the assembly department. So that would make a total of 1.6 million. So remember, in the plant-wide rate, and this is just a comparison here between these two methods, in the single plant-wide rate, 
we have the plant-wide factor overhead we allocated based on the rate that we calculated among products. In the multiple production department rate, we have two departments. We have the fabrication and we have the assembly. It could be more than these. And then we calculate or the, we get the factor overhead for each department. And then we calculate the factor overhead for each department. So we, now we have one rate for the fabrication department and we have another rate for the assembly department. And then using these two rates, we're going to calculate how much overhead is going to be allocated to the products. So I think an example will make this better. So each production department factor overhead is computed as follows. We get the budgeted department factor overhead. Again, remember that's only for the department. And then we divide it by the budgeted department allocation base. Rose Company uses direct labor hours as the allocation base, like in the previous example, for the fabrication and the assembly departments. The fabrication department is budgeted for 8,000 direct labor hours, while the assembly department is budgeted for 12,000 direct labor hours. Remember, we had a total of 20,000 hours. Now these hours are allocated 8,000 for fabrication and 12,000 for assembly. So for fabrication rate, for fabrication department factor overhead rate, we get the 1 million. Remember in the previous example here we said we're going to have a 1 million for the fabrication. So we take the 1 million divided by 8,000 direct labor hours and that's going to be $125 per direct labor hour. So the amount of or the rate that's used for the fabrication department is $125 per direct labor hour. For the assembly department factor overhead rate, it's the remaining 600,000. Again, this is what we have here. Then if I go back, divided by the 12,000 direct labor hours, which were provided to us here. So we have a $50 rate or per direct labor hour. So for the fabrication department rate, it's $125 per direct labor hours. For the assembly department rate, it's $50 per direct labor hour. So let's see how we're going to allocate it to products. 10 direct labor hours are required for the manufacture of each snowmobile and riding mowers. And I hope we remember that. In, in the single method, we had 10 hours and 10 hours. Now we want to see for the snowmobile, out of the 10 hours, 7 hours are for fabrication and 3 hours for assembly. The riding mower, mower does not take too much in fabrication, only one hour of fabrication and nine hours in assembly, but still the total hours are 10 hours. But remember, the rates here are different. So we expect that the overhead allocation between these two products is going to be different. So the factor overhead allocated to each snowmobile and riding mower would be in the next slide here. You see here, for snowmobile, we have seven direct labor hours for fabrication at $125 per direct labor hour. That will give us a total of $875. And it uses three direct labor hours at $50 per direct labor hours for $150 in total. If you add these together, that's $1,025. So that's the total allocated factor overhead to the snowmobiles. For the riding mowers, we have one direct labor hour at $125 per direct labor hour and nine direct labor hours at, at the $50 um, dollars per direct labor hour. So one at $125, that's $125. Nine at $50 is $450. If we add these numbers together, it's $575. So remember, we used to have the exact same number, $800 and $800 in the single method. Now it's $1,025 for the snowmobile and we have $575 for the riding mower. So in this case, you can tell that the snowmobile allocation of overhead is going to be higher than the riding mower. So as you can see here, the fabrication department, we have a million dollars. That's the budgeted overhead. The assembly department is 600000 That's, again, the budgeted overhead. The total is 1.6. The direct labor hour, or the rate that's used for um, the fabrication department, rate per direct labor hour is 125 multiplied by 7 for the for the uh, snowmobile and um, and multiply by 1 for 
um, the molars. And for the same thing for, for the assembly department, we get the rate, which is 50 multiplied by 3. That's what's used for the, the snowmobiles. And 9 hours, that's what that's used for the mowers. So if we want to calculate for the, for the snowmobiles, it's the 125 multiplied by 7 plus 50 multiplied by 3, which are these, these two hours. For the mowers, it's 125 multiplied by 1 plus the 50 multiplied by 9. Again, make sure when you're doing the calculations, you do the multiplication separately and then you add them together. So you won't get confused. So the differences. Now let's talk about something called the distortion or the distort, I'm sorry, the distortion of product cost. So the differences in Ruiz Company's factory overhead for each snowmobile and riding mower using the single plant wide and the multiple production department factory overhead rate method is presented or are as follows. So here we have the single plant wide method. I, I just simply call it the single method. And the multiple production department method, we have this column. And here we have the difference. So for the snowmobile and the riding mower under the single plant wide method, it was 800 for each. But for the multiple production department method, it's 1025 and 575. So you can see here that the difference is 20, 225 and it's negative for the snowmobile and for the riding mower it's positive. So the preceding cost distortions are caused by averaging the differences between the high factor overhead cost in the fabrication department and the low factor overhead cost in the assembly department. So let's try to understand more. So the following conditions indicate that a single plant-wide factor overhead rate may cause product cost distortions. And again, if that's the case, it's better to stay away from the single plant-wide factory method. If we have this kind of distortion, better stay away from that. So what are the co two conditions? The first condition, differences in production department factor overhead rates. Some departments have, have high rates where others have low rate. And if you can remember, we had a rate of 125 versus 50. I think this condition is met. So that's one of those things that we have to keep in mind. That's why single plant white factor might not be a good idea because we have differences in rate. The other condition is that there are difference or differences among products and the ratios of allocation based usage within, the, within a department and across departments. Some products have a high ratio of allocation based usage within the departments, where, whereas other products have a lower ratio of allocation based usage within the same departments. Just to, to confirm this, see, for example, for the assembly, it's three hours for the uh, snowmobile, and it's nine hours for the mowers. And again, here, it's seven hours versus one hour. So you can see there's big difference in the allocation. So I think these two conditions have been met. So because both conditions exist for RUS, the product costs from using the single plant wide factor overhead rate are distorted. So let's start, let's try to understand more about that kind of distortion. So we have first condition, $125 per direct labor hour versus 50 direct labor hour. See for fabrication and the rate is much higher compared to assembly. And then you see here, seven versus Three and one versus nine. So I think this is this is a big difference. There's differences in the ratios of allocation base usage. So I think because of that, it's better to use the multiple uh, multiple method because you know, you're going to get better calculation. So let me stop here. In the next video, we're going to go over ABC or activity based costing, and I think that will give us even a better representation of our overhead or better allocation of the overhead.